Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Starship and Super Heavy had their most recent test flight, Flight 5, and Super Heavy got caught by the chopsticks, which I am not going to be able to do. So I had to find some other way to celebrate this occasion, this happy occasion, and I've decided that the most fitting thing would be to put an actually reusable spaceship on top of Super Heavy. That's right. I've decided to put the shuttle on top. <laughs> uh, yep, 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 here, here we go. So uh, there's the shuttle and the external tank on top of Super Heavy and we are going to try this. I left off this particular fairing here because I didn't want anything colliding with the body flap and I have put into the bay a, a payload that I think it is capable of carrying if I can find the way to open the bay here. There's a lot of stuff here. Uh, I put into the bay 70 tons of water. A 70 ton tank. So that's the payload that we're expecting to be able to get to orbit. Now there are many complications to this but it turns out that even if I don't light the space shuttle main engines it can maintain balance. Super Heavy can actually deal with the fact, fact that the shuttle is on this side. It's weird, but only in Kerbal. I don't, I don't know if it's possible in real life. Uh, but in Kerbal, Super Heavy can deal with the fact that the shuttle is on the side. However, there's a problem with not lighting the shuttle main engines. First of all, they're meant to be lit on the ground. And second of all, if we don't light them, then when Super Heavy separates, the shuttle external tank will be too heavy uh, because normally it'll be drained by about two minutes uh, when the boosters separate. So that means that the thrust weight ratio will be bad and Super Heavy will very likely collide with the shuttle and its external tank. We want the external tank to be somewhat depleted so I could deplete it ahead of time and underfuel it but then we won't have as much delta V or I could just light the main engines and go like that. So I'm deciding to go ahead and light the main engines and hope the fact that they're tilted out mean that uh, hoping that that means that they will not torch the super heavy body. Now whether that's true or not I don't know. Uh, that we would need some analysis for and I do not have the capability to do that analysis. The important thing here is that we're going to try this audacious thing and see what happens. Now Super Heavy can carry much more than the shuttle. Uh, Starship is heavier than the shuttle and its external tank. Uh, by quite a lot, in fact. If you take a look at the mass, we're talking about wet 731 tons, plus the shuttle is about 810 to 820 tons altogether. Then there's the payload, so we're talking about at most 900 tons, probably less than that. And um, Starship is more than 900 tons. So, Super Heavy is going to get a little bit further out than normal and have some extra left over, probably. Um, that's fine. It, it, I think it can still get back with that. But let's just take it outside and have some fun. So let's not think too much about this. This is not obviously a serious proposal or anything. Uh, but it's interesting to see what it can get to orbit. That's the only thing. I decided the best place to launch will be, would be Pad 39B out of Cape Canaveral. Uh, because it's mostly available most of the time. But the, the, the actual launch platform here is a little bit... It's sort of hanging loose above the flame trench there. So, yeah. So, run shuttle SH. This is obviously not the Giulio Dondi uh, shuttle uh, script. Definitely not. It is the Giulio Dondi shuttle itself though, and run super heavy as well. I'm sure the Twitter mashup people have posted this before, uh, this sort of combination, but I don't know if anybody has actually tested it in Realism Overhaul. Alright, here we go. It's Pekka's Super Heavy, of course. And 
it's a mashup launch script. It's a launch script that combines uh, my shuttle script with the super uh, with the launch script for a starship. The first bit is the starship launch script from Pekka, and then the second bit is the regular shuttle script that I use. The super heavy return script is just the Pekka one, but it's not currently told to land at Cape Canaveral, so it's not going to actually work in the end. All right, we are through Max Q. I can tell because the way the launch script is configured, it holds prograde fairly tightly through Max Q, and then it de deviates. This is to avoid flipping. And with the shuttle on one side, that's sort of important. All right. Super heavy, shutting down engines, separating. Yeah, now you know, you can, you can sort of see why I didn't want that one panel. And it decouples the panels even though I told them not to decouple, so I'm not entirely sure what to do about that. Maybe it only keeps them if there's one? I'm not sure. I think it accidentally started the OMS engine, so I didn't mean for those to start just here. Well, it's rolling over. And Super Heavy is trying to go back somewhere. It does that a little bit later than with Starship, I think. Which is probably for the best, because otherwise it torched the external tank or something. Okay, Super Heavy is out of render range now. So, we are now examining whether we can get 70 tons to orbit. Alright, there's the full quality Earth from RSS Reborn, including the volumetric clouds. That's one of the perks of the shuttle install. I've got all the good stuff for Earth, because I don't need as much for the other planets. In a normal install, I have to put all the high quality stuff for other planets as well. And so, Earth doesn't get quite as much of a boost. But here, we can have all the nice stuff for Earth. Okay, getting close to orbit now. And we will expect the normal external tank disposal orbit. And I'm also looking to see that we don't reserve too much fuel in the external tank. That this is really the capacity, 70 tons is the capacity in this manner. Uh, okay, we probably need more separation there. I don't know how it got the sideways thing going, but alright. So, I don't think we left too much in the external tank. And now it's up to the OMS engines. Now they're carrying a heavier load than normal, but the space shuttle itself is 80 tons-ish. So a normal payload would bring that to 105 tons. I mean, the normal max payload would bring it to 105 tons. In this case, it's 150 tons total. So the OMS engines are pushing a little bit more than normal, but not that much. Even though the payload capacity has been increased by nearly a factor of three. And that's because part of the payload that people forget is the equivalent of a crew capsule that can carry eight people uh, and also a service module for that. The OMS system is also part of the payload, basically. The payload fairings are the payload bay doors. We could throw some of this out, but, you know, we're talking about an eight-person capsule and its service module here as well. Oh, we don't really want those. I did have reignitable... Okay. Okay, it accidentally reignited the RS-25s because I put RS-25s that could reignite just in case the KOS script or the Starship Super Heavy script did something weird to them. But, yeah, I didn't expect that to happen. Alright, making orbit. Technically, the Geodondi re-entry script should still work with this, but I'm not going to test that right now. Anyway, we are clearly in a decent orbit with the 70 tons of water. It's tough to get a dense enough 
payload to take advantage of the increased payload capacity. Now, if we had a larger external tank, then we might even get a greater payload capacity because we are not using all of Super Heavy's capabilities right now. But there it is. The shuttle in orbit, thanks to Super Heavy. Uh, there are other ways we could put the shuttle on Super Heavy. Uh, this is just the, the cheapest way. I mean, uh, we could actually have methane engines on here. We could have Raptor vacuum engines and put uh, actual tanks on the shuttle on the sides here so that it's less... But, but then mounting the shuttle on the Super Heavy is a little bit complicated. You'd have to have some sort of adapter. It's easier to mount the bottom of the external tanks to Super Heavy than to try and mount the back of the shuttle. The problem is with what we've done here is actually the hydrogen tank of the shuttle is not meant to bear that load. Uh, it's going to be squished by the Super Heavy. The hydrogen tank of the shuttle, the shuttle's hydrogen tank on the external tank is not meant to be load bearing and that's what makes it super light and makes the shuttle sort of efficient, at least in that way, compared to large stages like the core stage of SLS or the Energia rocket or something like that. So, yeah, it's not meant to bear that kind of uh, force, and as a result, it'd be crushed by Super Heavy. And we'd have to reinforce it, making it heavier, which is not nice. So, yeah, that's downside to having the external tank like that. Also, there's a potential for the RS-25s to like torch the top of Super Heavy. So there are, there are better ways to place the shuttle on top of Super Heavy and maybe I'll explore those. But it was sort of fun just to see this on top of Super Heavy and to carry this payload with it. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.